If we had pulled out of the Paris Climate Agreement, it would have negatively affected the health of the American populace. But even then, climate change still does. Cities with coal-fired power plants put higher hospitalization rates for uh, airborne diseases uh, and cancers, uh, many diseases that could be caused by inhaling airborne particles. This is all according to a scientific article by Xiaoping Liu, Lawrence Lesner, and Dr. David Carpenter, who we actually interviewed recently. Well, I'm a public health physician, which means that, you know, I don't treat patients, but I try to study what causes human disease, because if you know that, that tells you then what you need to do to reduce the rates of human disease. Public health can be affected by various factors, most of these dependent on the climate. People can be affected negatively by changes in physical, biological, and ecological systems. These can cause cardiovascular diseases, respiratory illnesses, and increased risk of deadly viruses and bacteria. A lot of my work has been done with chemical exposures coming from, uh, from the air, from the food, from the water. I think the important thing is that air pollution is very important. It's important for respiratory disease, but it's also important for heart disease. With the general effects of climate change, temperature extremes are also a definite factor in public health. Besides the obvious hypothermia and heat stroke, people being inside more often, all of the family, could in fact kill more vulnerable people with pathogenic diseases. So what's troubling you? From a less physical angle, mental health can be affected by having to stay inside more often for long periods of time. An increase of reported depression and general non-well-being has come from the COVID-19 pandemic, according to a Pew Research Survey. Many diseases could be worsened by climate change. Climate-related disasters and public health crises can lead to a shortage of food supplies in all countries. According to this Harvard study on school and public health, floods, droughts, more intense hurricanes, heat waves, and wildfires can drive down crop yields, destroy livestock, and interfere with the transport of food. Rising carbon dioxide levels from human activity can make staple crops like white rice and wheat less nutritious. Too much CO2 in crops can lead to the crops losing the essential nutrients in them. Climate change and climate-related disasters are leading to less food and nutrients, which will lead to a less healthy population and unhealthy future population. Uh, you know, some of the projections are that the oceans are going to rise as much as six meters. That's going to mean no New Orleans, no Miami, no New York City. Where are all these people going to go? Speaking of natural disasters, with recent extreme weather events, coastal communities have been destroyed and thousands upon millions of people have been displaced. These events have been linked directly to climate change and air pollution. How did we get to this point? Over the last 11,000 years, near the end of the last ice age, the climate has been steadily warming, but not by that much. This graph, published by NASA, shows the global change in carbon dioxide levels over the last 700,000 years. In just the last century, carbon dioxide levels have skyrocketed. Something like this hasn't ever happened this quickly in the entire history of our planet. The Paris Climate Accord is simply the latest example of Washington entering into an agreement that disadvantages the United States. In case we have forgotten, because we keep hearing that 2014 has been the warmest year on record, I asked the chair, you know what this is? It's a snowball. And that's just from outside here. So it's very, very cold out, very unseasonal. So here, Mr. President, catch this. Now, some say the agreement will force or at least strongly compel the United States to meet the present emission targets. This is untrue. First off, there are no present emission targets. Second, nothing is forcing any nation, to, let alone the United States, to meet any of these targets. According to the Union of Concerned Scientists, the United States is the second highest carbon dioxide emitter in the world. It's fast on its way to the first. So the Union of Concerned Scientists is a 50-year science-based advocacy organization. Uh, we work on a number of issues that are of importance uh, to people on the planet, and climate change is one of the biggest programs in our organization. This U.S. has heavily contributed to global warming, feeling the brunt of pulling out of the Paris Agreement. What have been we lost international regulation on fossil fuels and ceased to be accountable for our actions. So as you know, carbon dioxide emissions are long-lived in the atmosphere, and uh, climate change is the result of cumulative carbon emissions to date, not just the annual emissions. And the U.S. is by far the leading contributor to the cumulative carbon emissions in the atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution has started. Many ballot offers, 
president can perform without the support of others, but the need to make the white standards of the on auto lines. Another good idea would be to redevelop the Obama era power plant, regulate emissions from coal fired power plants and other industries. If you look at the climate policy in the car, it shows that the US cares about this global existential crisis. Uh, what we've got to do is, is stop burning fossil fuels. We've got to go to renewable energy that does not generate uh, carbon dioxide and methane. It seems like the future is bright, but that doesn't mean we can sit idly by and let our politicians take care of it. This affects every person. Without their cooperation and constant campaigning, we'll never be free from climate change.